Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Chance to Shine Live. We hope you enjoyed a fun and active half-term break. Our sixth lesson in the series is called Skillful Scorer, and we will once again be developing our batting skills. Hopefully, we can all remember the fantastic tips from England men's captain Joe Root in our previous batting session. Our coaching team of Joe and Rehan are with us again, and they've got their bats and frying pans at the ready. Give us a wave, guys. We also say a big hello to this week's Yorkshire Tea School of the Week, who are Team Fields from Sutton in Surrey. Guys, give us a wave. All set up and ready to go. They've been fantastic taking part in the activities both in and in school and those that are at home learning. And it's been brilliant about how they've been getting everyone across the school involved. And we know they've been having a lot of fun along the way. Also, a big shout out to Josh from Surrey Cricket Foundation, who is their chance to shine coach. Of course, a big thank you once again to our longtime supporters and friends at Yorkshire Tea, who have provided bumper supplies of tea for current and future schools of the week. So into the action. Today's learning objectives are to develop an effective striking method for hitting a moving ball. And secondly, to provide positive feedback to a partner to help improve their performance. We've got three activities for you. Number one is called the space race. Number two is called batting dodgeball. And number three is called last batter stands. We'll once again at the end be setting you a takeaway challenge. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And we've also got this week some special information around the All-Stars Cricket Programme. So do stay with us right through to the end. Of course, if you're watching on our YouTube channel, please let us know which school you're from in, a, in the chat bar and we'll try and give as many of you as possible shout outs during the session. So to take part today, you will need a bit of safe space around you to be able to move in. You're going to need something to strike with. So I'm gonna use my bat. I think Joe's got a frying pan ready for anything that you can use to strike a ball. You're going to need something to act as the ball. So a tennis ball, rolled up pair of socks, anything, a softball that you can use safely in your space. Also, you'll need some markers to place on the floor. So ideally, four markers. I've got some cones, but you can use tea towels, you can use socks, gloves. I think Rehan's even using some tennis balls for his, um, so you'll get to see that in action. And finally, you're going to need a target to act as your stumps for the game at the end. I've got a set of stumps for anything. It could be a bin, it could be a box, anything that you've got that can act as your stumps. We are going to encourage you to complete the second and third activities with a partner, if you can. But don't worry if you're working alone at home or on your own within the school space, then we'll explain how you can do it as an individual as well. Remember, go at your own pace. If you need to take a break or grab a drink as we go through, please do. So, right, we're going to get ready to go into our starter activity now, which is called the Space Race. Rehan, over to you. Thank you, Ian. Hello, everyone. So, as Ian mentioned, so this part of the activity is called the space race. But before we get into any activity that we do, we should always have a little bit of a warm-up, right? So, what I'm going to ask you all to do is, if you've got a bat or a frying pan, anything to act as a bat, we're going to try and do some bat taps as a warm-up, right? So, if you remember a couple of weeks ago, we did this, and we just got a ball, or if you've got a pair of rolled-up socks or anything else to act as a ball, we're just going to hold the bat, Try and keep holding it with two hands and do some back taps for two minutes. Right, so we just try and get warm. Let's try and move around now a little space, so safe space, making sure that we're not going to be bumping into anybody. Right, so you've got two minutes warming up. Right, off you go. We're already very busy on the shout outs, guys. There's lots of schools that have joined us. So we'll say hello to Overdale Juniors, St. Izzy Primary, Nairsborough St. John's, Hollybrook, St. Thomas, Hayes Lane, our previous schools of, school of the week. Welcome back, guys. We've got Berry C of E. We've got Audley, and I know Audley have got a special photographer in the school today for Chance to Shine Live. So hello, Mr. Hussein. Hello. Hope you guys are enjoying it. We've got Sheldwich, we've got Aldwyn, Sharman's Cross, St. Peter's Leatherhead, Robin Hood, Kingmore Junior, Upton St. Leonard's, Riverview Junior, Crondale, 
Holland Park, Dorchester Middle, and Bailey Moorhill. So, guys, that's loads of schools. In fact, some new schools that haven't had shout outs before. So, welcome. If it's your first chance to shine live session, hope you're enjoying it and get ready to get involved. There'll be a lot of action today. It's a good warm up, this one, Rehan. It's good after a week's half term to get the hour yeah, back de in. Yeah, definitely. So thinking about we... all the different ways we can move as well, Rehan, when we're doing this. Yeah, absolutely. So I was I was trying to go down on one knee and try and do a back tap, but I found it quite difficult. Just it's good to hear to you challenging yourself, though. Yeah, just trying to challenge myself, but quite difficult. I've made right, it easier. I've got a balloon to slow me down. Nice. Not long to go, keep going. Remember, we're trying to get yourself warm. The big balloon there, Joe, I like it. I like that, Joe, it's really good. It is, yeah. Well, no, the challenge with that is to try and get loads in, isn't it? Because it travels slowly. Yeah, true. that's true, though. That's a good point. <clears throat> right, well done, everyone. That's two minutes up. Right, so hopefully we've managed to get ourselves a little bit warm. So trying to move around into our little safe space that we've created. Right, okay, so for this next part of the activity, right, what I want us to try and do is try and find some markers, some cones, or anything we can use that we can put down on the floor to move around with. So if you look behind me over here, I've put down some tennis balls, just wrap them into tape. So it's just basically tennis balls, and I've spread them out into my space, right? So this part of the activity, what I want us to do is Try to create with this with the safe space that we've got. I want to try and move around our targets, our solar system, if you want to call it solar system, and try and do back taps without dropping the ball onto the floor. Now, there's a few different ways we can do this. So the first way we can do it is keeping the ball on the ground and trying to move around our planets or targets, if you want to call them. The second way, which is a lot more challenging, is trying to do the back taps and moving around at the same time around our target. Now we're doing the back taps without the ball dropping is quite difficult. So you have to obviously keep on uh, having awareness of where we're running around. So I'm just gonna do a quick demonstration. So if you can see here, I've got my target. I'm just going around him, trying not to touch my target. So I'm moving the bat around like that. So that's, that's probably the more easiest way. So the more challenging way is doing back taps, but doing the same thing, trying to move around without hitting our target. So, oh, ball drop there. So it's quite difficult because I have to move around at the same time, making sure that I don't touch any of my targets. So that is quite challenging, but at the same time, you know, it's quite enjoyable as well. So. If you've got any targets we can use, try and find some targets and let's see if we can place them on the floor in a safe space. And let's see in two minutes if we're able to move around in our solar system and try and keep the ball up or along the ground. So remember, be safe. Just make sure that you're not too close to the person next to you. And let's give that a go. Right. You've got two minutes. Off you go. Quite difficult that if you're doing it in if you're doing it back taps because you have to keep one eye on sort of your targets and the ball as well. So Rehan, I love this one and I'm keeping it on the floor to start with because I play yeah. as well as playing a bit of cricket, I love playing a bit of hockey during the winter. So actually this is really good for hockey skills. Oh nice, that's really good. So Joe, so guys, you can be really tips? creative. Can be really yeah. creative. You can name those planets. That's true, yeah. So, Joe, any tips from you for this one? Oh, um, I think definitely if you're well, like me, I'm using a tennis racket just to make it a bit easier. I think tip is to yeah. watch the ball all the way onto the tennis racket. So let your feet walk, yeah. but I think it's really important just to watch that ball to stop it hitting the floor. Definitely. Yeah, I think balance over here is a really yeah, important one too. 
Yeah. And in cricket, we do yeah. a lot of sideways movement, don't we? So we go side yeah, to absolutely. side and forward and backwards. So it's good practice on all those different directions. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Some really, you know, some really good stuff there from Team Fields. Excellent. Some nice movements. I like that. It's really nice. That's good. Yeah. We're going to do I a few one... more shout outs. Rehan, just before we move on. So we've got Bailey, yeah, sure. Moorhill, Cook and Rise, Cranfield. Cotton Gardens, St Mary's Charminster, Leeming RAF School and Highfield. More new schools with us, first time shout outs. So welcome on board, guys. Yeah, nice. Right, so I was, as I was just... Sorry, Chuck. No, um, as I was just, Sorry, sorry. As I was saying, um, the one thing from me to probably make it a little bit easier is maybe try to get rid of some targets. Um, or, to make it more challenging, add extra targets in. So if you can see here, I've got four or five targets. To make it a little bit easier, I could get rid of some. To make it a little bit harder, I could add some more in. So you've got more movement, you have to move around. So that can be a bit more challenging as well. Right, oh, that's two minutes gone again. Just going by really quickly. Right, so well done again, everyone. Some really good stuff there that we're seeing from Team Field. So hopefully we're getting as warmer and warmer as the session goes on. Right, fantastic. Now, don't worry, obviously, if you're trying to do back tap and the ball keeps you know, um, put, put in the ground, you know, it, it happens. But like we always say, practice, practice, practice. So we keep having a go. Right. So for the final part of this session, we're going to try and create a bit of a challenge. So we have a personal best challenge. So what I want us to do is there's a few different things we can do here. So as Ian said, he was doing it on the floor, as I demonstrated as well. So you can either do it on the floor or you can do it in the air, moving around your target. And I want you to see in two minutes how many targets you can move around of, right? So don't always go through the same target. Move around to the different areas that you've got and just keep going around within two minutes or at the same time trying to either A, keeping the ball on the ground or B, keeping the ball in the air like this moving around. Obviously, and every target you go through or every solar system or every planet you pass, you'll give yourself one point. So in them two minutes, let's see how many points we can get. So remember, if you're doing it with back taps, if the ball drops, then that's your score and then try and start again. Right. So remember, it's a personal best. You're trying to create a score for yourself. Right. So the same thing, be safe. Remember, the couple of things we want you to think about here is keeping balance and also watching the ball all the way down to the bat as well. Right. So two minutes, personal best. Let's see how many points you can get moving around your solar system, right? Off you go, everyone. I've named my planets rehand. I'm going past Titan and Beantopia, round through yeah. Plutonia. You could name all the different planets. Has anyone got a crazier name for a planet than me? You got Krypton. Krypton, yeah. Superman's there, I like it. <laughs> oh. Like you said, we Lovely should have got Mark Trapp Team field, so some fantastic stuff. We've got some one-handed bat taps, two-handed. Lots of creativity, yeah. and I love the way that we're watching that ball all the way onto the bat yeah, or the racket. absolutely. Some really good concentration there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Got Roman Breed Primary School, Monk Fryston Primary School with us as well today. Welcome, guys. You could go Christ this. The King in Macclesfield as well. Welcome oh. on board. Yeah. <laughs> keep, yeah. Keep going, guys. Not long left. Keep going. So, Rehan, so obviously we, we can go in the air or on the ground. Those are two yeah. options that we've got. If you yeah. decide that you want to just stay on the ground, a good tip yeah. for me about making it more challenging is thinking about your route through. So if you're working with a partner and you've named yeah. your planet, your partner could call out the planet name. So you, you don't know where you're going to go next. If you're working with a yeah. partner, they tell you you've quickly got to go around. Another yeah. one that I've done as well is making sure that, say if I went around the left-hand side of my planet or my cone first, the yeah. next one that I go to, I've got to travel around the right-hand side, just to add a bit of challenge and variety. Yeah. That's, 
some really good tips there, some really good ideas there, Ian. Thanks for that. Right, oh, two minutes up again. Again, just, just flowing by really fast again. Right, so well done, everyone. So hopefully after that first start up to the activity, we're all feeling nice and warm now and we're ready to start to the next activity. So I'm just going to pass you back to Ian. We're going to go through the next activity. Thank you, Ian. Brilliant stuff. As you said, Rehan, that was a really great warm-up. Lots of active time to get uh, touches on the balls, nice and active, and we're ready to yeah. go. Right, this time, our next activity, we're going to be needing to be really fast on our feet for this one. Really exciting little challenge that Joe's got for us, which is batting job dodgeball. Joe, over to you. Thanks, Ian. That's great. Yep, so this activity is batting dodgeball. Just like we said at the start when Ian went you through the introduction, you'll need something to strike the ball with. Okay, so a bat or a tennis racket or your frying pan, whatever you have. You'll need something to hit. So whether it's your socks or your tennis ball. And then obviously you'll need something to make your target. So I've got my four cones on the floor, but I was using in rehab sessions some tins of beans or whatever you want to use to make your target area because we need an area in order to dodge in and move around. So I'm on my own today. So I'm gonna show you how to do this game as an individual, but it's a really, really good pairs game. That's what gives that element of dodgeball and that team effort, okay? So we're gonna show you a video shoot soon of how to do that. But just before we get going, we wanna get our eye in into striking that ball, okay? So we wanna get as many points as you can. So we're gonna practice defending the ball, so trapping the ball, okay? And stopping it at our feet if we can, okay? So I'm gonna do this by using a wall. So nice and easy, I've got a big target to start with, hopefully it's make it easier for me. Okay, all I'm gonna do is just practice, first practice for two minutes, because I'm gonna throw the ball or hit the ball at the wall, and I'm gonna try and trap it within my zone. So all I want you to practice. If you've got a partner, great, you could have maybe six goes each, so somebody could throw the ball at you. Okay, so somebody could throw the ball at you instead, and you've got to try and stop it in your zone. This time, if it goes out, it doesn't matter, Okay, we're just getting practice warm up, but the aim of the game is to try and trap that ball, okay, in that zone. All right, if you find that too easy with a bigger ball, try a tennis ball or something a bit easier. So again, use that rebound. Oh, that was a bit harder, too many bounces on that. See what finds your level, okay? But the aim of the game is to trap the ball or defend the ball from your leg inside your zone, okay? So go get your zone set up, okay? Make sure you've got something to strike with and something to hit. Okay, if you're working with a partner, remember to swap maybe after every six steps. All right, guys, your two minutes will start now. Go, go, go. So this one's a bit of a challenge, isn't it, guys? Yeah, it's definitely is, Joe, I think particularly trying to get that element of control and getting it bouncing as close to you as possible. Why, why would that be important, Joe? So, for defending the ball, okay, um, we want to make sure we're defending our area. Because if, if the ball goes past us and hits our stumps, then we're out. So, we want to make sure we can defend our area. So, make sure we're in the game as long as possible. And for those who may have had the opportunity to watch some of the test match today, they might have seen some of England's batters not quite being able to defend the ball yeah. or stop it from hitting their legs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They need, they need, they need to watch our video. Did you? Exactly, yeah. Rayhan. Come on, chance to shine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do the basics oh. well, that's what it's about. That's it. And for now, when we're practicing, just want you to think about moving, okay? How are you going to do it? Doesn't matter, if everyone else says. How are you stopping that ball? Remember to swap over it if you've got a partner, if you both get those. Rehan, I said maybe six yes. goes each. Why do you think um, I said six goes each? So, well, we have six balls in an over in cricket. So, if it, essentially, they're having one over each. Yeah, the one over each yeah. and then swap over. Yeah. And that's a good, yeah, that's a good amount of balls to taste in the two minutes. What happens at the end of those six balls, Joe? So, at <laughs> the end of those six balls, well, in it depends which format of the game you're playing, but the next batter gets to go and a different baller has an over. Yeah. And also, we get to have a chat usually, don't we, between over We do, yeah. You can chat with your batting yeah. partner, can't you? That's it. Yeah. A few seconds, guys. Do really well. Yeah. I think if we're working in pairs as well, we can do it to the tips as well. Really good point. Yeah. Excellent, guys. Really, really well done. So hopefully you used your area to trap the ball in, okay? So we're going to make it a little more technical now and give you some tips and keys to success. 
on how you can improve that before we get into a game. Because now we're going to make it into a bit competition, all right? Whether it's against yourself to improve your personal best or whether it's against your partner. So with the aim of the game, like we said, is to defend. Striking the ball still means getting the ball on your back, striking it down to the ground maybe to defend it, or striking it can be really far. But this game, we want to defend our stumps, okay? So defending in cricket is just as important. Keys to success, the same, just like we practiced last, so a few weeks ago now when we were brilliant, okay, batters there, okay? We want to make sure we watch the ball, just like Joe Root said, all the way onto the contact of our bat or our tennis racket or our frying pan. So watch the ball all the way onto the bat, really important. The second key to success is making sure you get balanced. So hopefully, okay, when I'm hitting the ball and stopping, you can see I'm getting quite far forward. So balance for me, I've got my legs quite far apart. Okay, so I like mine a bit further apart. You might find balance in a different way, okay? A little bit airy. But my head is always getting over the ball. So I'm going quite far forward, okay, to get that balance to defend that ball. All right, so balance, okay, is really, really important. Watching the ball all the way into the back and balance position when you strike the ball, especially if we're trying to drop it downwards. You guys will find your own way in a second. So this game, okay, we're going to show you a video in just a second how you can do it in pairs but I want to tell you through the rules very quickly. So this is called batting dodgeball. If you hit the ball, you get one point. So say you strike the ball and you hit it with your bat, you get one point. Fantastic. So that would give me one point. It's just within my area, but it bounced before it left. However, okay, I could be out if I miss the ball three times. So I might change the ball. So I might go around and I might have missed oh, one. Oh, I missed again. Two. What am I not doing? Maybe I'm watching the ball. Maybe then. Oh, just. Okay. Three. I'm nearly, I'm just in. So if you miss it three times, you could be out. Or, okay, if it hits my legs. Okay, it hits my legs. So if I go like that and just hit some of the real cricket this way, get to your leg before your bat, so a leg before wicket. Okay, you might put the LBWs. That could be out. And the last way is if you feel like you've had too many Weetabix and you hit it too hard. So say I roll the ball and I whack it really hard, that's out as well. So lots of rules to remember, but we're going to watch the video in a second, okay, to see how we can practice. But if you hit the ball inside your square, you get one point. So nice defensive, one point shot, one point for me. How many points can you get, okay, without getting out? Obviously, if you're out, you're just going to swap the apart. Okay, guys, we're going to show you a video in just a second. So go set yourself up, decide who's going to go first. Okay, and then we're going to see. So just to repeat those points in the scoring system that you're going to see, you've got your area, so my two by two meter zone. Okay, and the video is ready to go. That's one point, excellent. Great stuff. So you can see the point there. So it's a really fast demonstration, but you get the idea. That dodgeball element, you've got to be quick on your feet. Okay, ready to make sure you're watching the ball all the way into your back and then you're in a balanced position. Guys, you've got two minutes just to go and see how many points you can score. What's your personal best score in those two minutes? And then we'll have another practice in a second. So again, one point if you trap the ball. Oh, well done. Okay, if it hits your legs, you're out. If you hit it too hard, you're out. Or if you miss it three times, you're out. Guys, your two minutes starts now. Go to go. Excellent. Love that you can see the rules on there, guys. I'm just watching Greenfield. Go on, Ian. Like it. Yeah. Three hands. Quick question. And... Oh, go on. No, no, go for it, Ian. I was just going to say that the bit about you mentioned about trying to get it to avoid hitting your legs and trying to avoid missing it, this is making it like if we were playing a game of cricket, so we're practising the skills that we would apply in a game here. So defending the ball, whilst it might not seem like the most exciting things to do, if you defend a good ball and then you get a bad ball to whack next time along, you can score more runs. Exactly, and it's about those decisions, isn't it? We've talked about those decisions, it's really good. Yeah. Talk about how important defending the ball is because if you're out, 
you can't be in there to bat any longer, can you? So it's an important part of cricket. Exactly. I think as well on this one, it can be quite good fun, isn't it? You're almost having to show that you can concentrate for longer against your partner yeah. who's bowling at you or the wall. You're trying to show that you've got the skills to stay in and go in number one back, or two or three. I love to see the work from Team Fields. We've got lots of different types of bowl on show as well. So, for example, oh, you can use underarm if you're working with your partner. But if you yeah, want to challenge that's... yourself, try and face an overarm bowl. Make it as realistic yeah. as you can. Yeah, that young man working with the teacher there in the black jumper is doing a great job of stepping forward towards it as well to defend it, get the head over the ball. Really good. Yeah, it's oh, really good. good. Watch the ball all the way onto the bat. Mm. If they're out, remember, swap over the last few seconds, guys. If you've got them on the legs, if the ball has got them on the legs, swap them. Have a go. Excellent, guys. Really, really well done. Okay, that is quite a difficult game to get going. So we're going to give you another opportunity to play. So the rules, now you're beginning to learn them and you've had a practice of your own, you should remember. So we're remembering, okay, that if you hit the ball, you get one point. So it's really nice and easy if you get, if you hit the ball down, okay, again, defensively, okay, you get one point in your area. Fantastic. To get out though, okay, if the ball, if you throw the ball and it hits your leg first, you're out. Okay, if you miss it three times, you're out. Or if you strike it too hard or you go for the moon, as we say in our cricket club, then you're out in this one because we're trying to develop that skill of decision making. So quickly, while I'm talking as well, have a chat with your partner, okay? Can you think of two things they've done really well with the bat? Did they maybe, you know, get their head forward to watch the ball all the way into the bat? Okay, can you think of two things that they did really well? Maybe they moved their feet quickly. Okay, maybe there's lots and lots of different elements. Um, Ian, quickly, what did you think you did well in order to maintain getting lots and lots of points rather than getting out? So for me, Joe, it was letting that ball come right to me, playing it late under my eyes so that I could then control where it bounced. So if I've got control over the shot, if there were fielders around me and I didn't have control, I might get out caught. So playing it really late, right under, a nice balanced position just like that. I love that camera angle you just showed as well because your bat is in line with your body as well. Your bat's not out to the side. It's right in line with your body underneath your so head. It's a straight you line, isn't it? Straight. From my head down. Oh. Yeah. Rian, he's just too good, isn't he? He's like a yeah. demonstrator's uh, <laughs> pet. I love it. Just wait until yeah. the end of the season. I'll miss everyone then. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Right, guys, we're going to give you guys now, okay, an opportunity to do quick rock, paper, scissors or decide which partner goes first, but this is the real game now. You guys are going to play until you get your partner out. So if you've got your bowler and your bowler's going first, they can't bat until they get you way on the legs or you miss three times, okay? So really feel as you're going to make them work hard, work fast, okay, to get the player out. So you can add to your point score. So say I hit the first two, okay, oh, just, okay, so maybe count as one and then two, okay, but I get out on the third one, hit my leg, I might swap with my partner, but I keep my two points and add them on next time, okay? But it's the person at the end with the most points that wins. But remember, if you're out, you've got to swap with your partner. In this game, if you're on your own like me, okay, what you can do maybe, okay, is maybe go back to zero. So if you're out, so if I get the ball, hit the ball, oh, one point for you. Okay, if I go and I move the wrong way, or I miss, okay, I just have to go back to zero if I get out. But if you've got a partner, okay, you're going to work until they get you out. So the batter stays a batter until the fielder or the bowler gets them out. Okay, that's going to be your last two minutes. Really, really easy there. If you've got your two good points as well, okay, maybe think about what you got told by your partner you did well. So thinking about Ian's body position, getting your bat really in line, watching the ball all the way onto the bat to find that balanced position. Guys, make the best batter win. You've got two minutes. Go, go, go. Oh, Miss is looking serious there at team school. <clears throat> looking like she really wants to get him out. Look at that focus. A couple oh, more shows, yes. guys. We've got <laughs> Rookfield Primary, we've got Camelot Year 3. I think, Joe, one, one thing for me is, is thinking about actually 
Yes, we, we are using our bats quite a lot today because we've got them and we wanted to show you what it looks like. But if you haven't got a bat at home, there are so many other bits and pieces. So we have used the frying pan a lot. But I found exactly. this lovely broom. Now, this is going to be really challenging to try and hit. And oh, you've got to really you watch it. that. Yeah. And this is the sweet shot, by the way. Cricket joke, of course. Um, <laughs> yeah, frying pan had as well as well. If you haven't got a broom, if you haven't got anything, well, actually, you can still use your hand. That's a great idea. Yeah, I love mm. that. Because it's just about getting it down, isn't it? I like how you're Absolutely. using your left hand there to do it. Almost that top hand that would replicate your back as well. Yeah, and that's right. important. Back of your hand. People forget, don't they? I'm a right-handed batter, but my left hand is really important for holding that strong grip. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Brianne, have you got any tips of how they might be able to stay in? Any tips to stay in, did you say? Yeah, so how many points they can score? Any tips to make sure the batter makes contact with the ball and they don't get out? Well, I mean, apart from the obvious of watching the ball, having that, maintaining that being ready for when that ball comes. And just like that, yeah. Sort of that, yeah, so that'll give you more of a chance to stay in and hit the ball. Right. If we're rushing it... So, yeah, if we're brushing it, then our balance tends to be a little bit off. Excellent. Well done, guys. Sorry, I was just watching team fields. They're really, really good there, guys. Superb. So, batting dodgeball. Hopefully, you've got that quick movement of feet, your head over the ball, getting that bat in line, or your tennis racket, or your frying pan, or even your left hand, that top hand that would be there. It's really good practice. Some really good advice and something you can do at home to continue. Uh, Ian and Rehan, back to you. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, Joe. So... That was a lot of fun, a great way to get moving and also to practice some of those important batting uh, shots. So that forward defensive and putting those keys to success into practice. And we're going to take that on a step further now. So we're going to finish today's lesson with a game called Last Batter's Dance. So the aim is very simple, a little bit like batting dodgeball. It's to try and last as many balls as you can. And the number of balls you're able to last for before losing that last wicket is your score. Okay, so for those who may have seen a bit of cricket, remember that famous Ben Stokes and Joe Le uh, Jack Leach partnership at Headingley. So Jack Leach playing that role of defending, keeping that last wicket so Ben Stokes could go and whack the ball everywhere. Okay, so as we said, you've got one wicket, your last wicket. So you can lose your wicket in the following ways. Firstly, we've got stumps or a target behind us. If you Throw that ball against your wall, it rebounds back and it hits those stumps. Unfortunately, you are out. Or if your partner bowls it and it hits your stumps, you are out. If you hit the ball outside of your markers without bouncing, okay, so we've got four cones down on the floor, you can change the size of them for the challenge. But if you hit it out of there, that is out court. So even though you might not have fielders, we're going to pretend that there are fielders. And finally, like we had in batting dodgeball, if you miss the ball three times, okay, so if it hits your body, you play a shot and it misses, that is out as well. Okay, so your partner, we want you to use an underarm throw with one bounce to start off with. But if we find that easy, we can change the challenge up as we go along. Remember, if you haven't got a partner, keep track of your personal best. So how many balls did you last? If you lasted five first time round, can you beat that? You get to six, seven and beyond. OK, if you are working with a partner this time, what we're going to do, we're going to split it into two lots of two minutes. One person will bat for the first two minutes and see what their personal best last wicket score can be. And then in the middle, we're going to swap rounds. So one becomes the bowler and the other person becomes the batter. OK, so two lots of two minutes activity if you're working with a partner. If you haven't got someone to work with, you've got four minutes of as much batting as you possibly can. But we're going to do a little bit of feedback in the middle. So first round, two minutes on the clock. Last batter stands. See how many you can score. Let's go. I love what you said about the underarm throw there, Ian, as well. It's a really good way to get practice in, so you're not putting too much pressure. Absolutely, Joe. I think it's all about getting the bat to have some practice here, getting That's a bit it. of confidence, but then increasing the challenge. So those that have got some back garden space at home, if you're really confident, you can have someone bowl at you. Yeah. Let, let's get that bat on the ball. Try and keep that last wicket. 
Mm. Rayanne, any tips from you for this one? Uh, I think for this one, I mean, similar to what I said to Joe previously, just about um, keeping that balance, but making sure that kind of you, you're moving your feet as well when you're hitting the ball. So, so keeping your bat near your feet, watching the ball onto the bat, I think that's a really good tip. And that, that gets us into that balanced position, doesn't it? So it might not always yeah. come straight to the middle of your bat. You might have to move to get into that position. Yeah. Okay, so if you're working with a partner and you're finding it really challenging to get them out, think of some things that you might be able to do with your throw. Can you throw it a little bit quicker? Can you throw it slower to make them wait longer? Can you even be really sneaky and put a bit of spin on it as well? Okay, anything yeah. you can do to increase that challenge. Batters, if you're lasting a long time and they're still not getting you out, why don't you try it with one hand? Okay, yeah. try and get your balance, that shape of your shot with one hand. Some really good batting there from Team Fields, really good. Brilliant. So nearly end of the first round of two minutes. Okay, so have a little bit of a pause, pause to think. So if you are working with a partner, this is the time to swap around and let them have a bat. If you're working on your own, reflect on your score. So what was your best score that you're able to keep your wicket with? Maybe you didn't lose your wicket. If you didn't lose your wicket, what I'd like you to do next time is increase that challenge. If you did, and think about the ways in which you can apply those keys to success. So the balance, let it come right in. I've also got a little bit creative here. So you might see I've got some score sheets up on the wall. So I'm replicating the England women's game from yesterday. England had a fantastic win, but Heather Knight and Tammy Beaumont both scoring runs. I've got England versus New Zealand. I'm going to have five batters for New Zealand, see how many I can score for New Zealand. And then I've got five for England. I'm going to see how many I can score with them. So creating my own little game because I'm working on my own. It just adds a little bit of challenge. Let's see which batter, which team gets the best score. So two minutes again. Remember to swap over if you haven't already. And we're going to practice again. Last batter stands, putting those skills into practice. Away you go, guys. So we've got Sharpness Primary School. Welcome back, guys. Had a few shout outs for you last few weeks. So good to see you with us on Chance to Shine Live again. So this is going to be our last go of the game. Okay, last go, last round for today. So get in as many as you can. See if you can get your highest score for that last wicket. I think another good tip here, Ian, is when we are hitting the ball, defending the ball, making sure that we're using the face of the bat and keeping it straight. Sometimes what tends to happen is when we come forward with our bat, sometimes it tends to angle if we're moving around. So keeping it straight, the so full face, keeping it straight, that's a good tip Brilliant. there. We love that. And that's the classic tip, isn't it? It's to show the maker's name. So you can see that yeah. Chance to Shine logo. We've got a Grey Knuckles bat here. So show that to your partner, see if they can see that full face. Whenever I'm batting, I always have to, I, uh, a friend of mine, Ali, telling me to keep my head still as well. So watching that ball and keeping that head still. I'm sure Joe Reed said something to me, keep those eyes level and that head still. Absolutely, you've got to be able to watch it, haven't you, Joe? And actually, a lot of these tips we've given you over the six weeks, they're similar, aren't they, for batting bowling? So that those four things of being balanced, being in a good position, watching that ball, important, isn't it, across all of our skills? Exactly. The last yeah. 20 seconds. Let's see if we can hang on to that last wicket. If you're defending, show that resilience. Don't let them get you out. Brilliant, Joe. No one's going through that defence today. <laughs> <laughs> I've, 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 I've enjoyed it. I've improved since starting. I'm loving it. Fantastic. Well, look, that, that's that's what it's all about, isn't it, guys? So, OK, you might have lost a few wickets, but that's fine, as long as we're learning on the way and finding. And actually, although we've talked about ways in which you can get into different positions, 
this is a lot about concentration and resilience as well. So really important skills, not, not just for playing cricket, but in the classroom, being able to learn, really, really valuable. So they cross over both in sport, but and also into other stuff that you do in life. So that was last batter stands. So to finish off, as we promised, we will be setting you a star challenge. This week, it's a little bit different. So this week's star challenge actually is over to you. So it's called Creative Cricket. So as coaches, me, Joe, Rehan, we all love coming up with new and exciting different drills, ideas, games that we can play. And we also like the players that we work with to come up with their own ideas as well. So our challenge this week is over to you. So we want you to think about all the skills and knowledge you've developed in the six weeks of Chance to Shine Live and come up with your own cricket game. We've shown you two examples today. So cricket dodgeball, and last batter stands, they're games that we've created that we think are fun and can develop batting skills. So what we want you to do is think of the skills you developed, create your own version of a game at school, at home, and share it back with us. Okay, we'd love to see what brilliant ideas that you can come up with. Okay, so this is our takeaway challenge, creative cricket. We also mentioned at the very start of today's session that we were going to be talking about the All-Stars Cricket Programme. Now, All-Stars registrations will soon be opening over the next few weeks, and you'll be able to register your interest, parents, through allstarscricket.co.uk. So you can go on there, register, put in your local area, and you'll soon find out about information of which clubs and centres are running the programme. The All-Stars programme is aimed at five to eight-year-olds, and there are over 2,000 clubs and centres around the country who take part, and they'll be running their programmes from around mid-May. The programme is a fantastic opportunity to carry on this, developing your skills that you've loved and learned from Chance to Shine Live, to learn some more new skills, and really importantly, to have fun this spring, summer, with new friends and also celebrating with your old friends. Great news this week that we might be able to get out and be active again this summer. All Stars Cricket will allow you to enjoy that. Next week, we will be talking about the Dynamos Cricket programme for slightly older ones, but this week, talking about All Stars. So what we've got for you now is a short video taster clip that will show you what to expect from All Stars. Lovely stuff. So for me, I, I'm fortunate at my club at Bridge North in Shropshire that, that I've been involved in the All-Stars programme over the last few years and absolutely love it. It's one of the highlights of my summer Friday evenings, getting out there and seeing the kids running around and you guys you'll have if you do sign up for the programmes, I can guarantee you'll have a fantastic time. Um, so lovely to see that video showed us, didn't it? Learn new skills, make new friends, lots of smiling faces and brilliant kit that you also get with the All-Stars programme. So, Joe, I know you've been involved with All Stars at your cricket club. Any, any tips that you'd give up to any parents or kids thinking about signing up? I'd say just do it. Sign up, come down, big smile on your face. You'll get lots of chances to hit the ball, ball the ball, throw the ball, and you'll have a great, great time. Even if the weather's not great, get down there on a cloudy day. You will work up a sweat. I've loved it. Lovely. Thank you, Joe. And Rehan, I know you've been involved in the programme at the club as well. So anything that you'd like to say? I mean, so definitely, just re definitely recommend it to all the parents to bring their children along. But not just that, it gets the children active as well, gets them moving. And, you know, that's what we want everyone, all our children to be sort of physically active as well. So, and not just that, but as the video said, you know, you, you'll make lots of new friends. You know, you'd love it so much that, you know, you'd want to continue it all year round. So, yeah, definitely recommend it. Lovely stuff. Thanks, Rayhan. So, guys, allstarscricket.co.uk. And as we said, next week we will talk, be talking about the Dynamos Cricket Programme for 8 to 11-year-olds. So, just to finish off from today, well done to everyone for taking part and giving it your best across the three activities. Next week is actually going to be our final lesson of Chance to Shine Live. And we're going to put all those skills into practice through the Confident Cricketer session. So it's going to be about personal best challenges, and we're also going to tell you about how you can bring with you or download your score sheets that we can use for the special all-rounder challenge that we're going to do. 
We're also going to be joined by three very special cricketing guests who are going to be passing on their top tips. So it's definitely not to be missed. Remember, as always, you can keep practicing at home, at school or in the back garden. This lesson from today, as well as all the others, will be available to watch back on our Chance to Shine YouTube channel, but also on our website, chancetoshine.org forward slash live. And remember to be in with the chance of being our final Yorkshire Tea School of the Week. Please send in your pictures, your tweets, your photos, just as, as Team Fields did last week or week before. Remember to tag in at Chance to Shine and at Yorkshire Tea. And what we'd love to see as well, remember that creative cricket to star challenge. We want to see videos and pictures of you coming up with your own games. Big thank you once again to our coaches, Joe and Rehan, and also a huge well done to all the staff and the children at Team Fields. Give us one last big wave, guys. You've been absolutely brilliant today. Love seeing you take on each other in your challenges, providing lots of feedback, positive feedback to each other. Okay, and thank you for showing us how to be skillful scorers. So please join us again next week at the same time for the final instalment of Chance to Shine Live. Take care and keep safe.